Hey guys, Matt here. This is my review of All Quiet on the Western Front. This movie is directed by Edward Berger and the movie stars Felix Kammerer and Daniel Bruhl. Now the plot of this movie is about five schoolboys in the motherland of Germany during World War I. And for them, joining the war effort is a sense of national pride. It's something they're excited to do. And these boys think of war as a game, and they soon find out that it's not that, but rather a life-changing experience that men have to endure. So, going into this film, I had read the book in high school of All Quiet, and I saw the 1930 version, which if you've never seen it, <clears throat> considering that movie is almost 100 years old, and it being one of the first talky black and white movies, it's great. And then I saw the 1970s version with uh, Richard Thomas and Ernest Borgnine is also good. So I was curious about this film because it had a bunch of award nominations this season. It's on Netflix, so I checked it out. And I'm going to be honest. For it being a war movie, let alone a World War I movie, I found this movie underwhelming. Now don't get me wrong. It had some interesting aspects to it. It depicted war as this violent meaningless, brutal affair. And Edward Berger did just that with the directing. My problem with the film is the central character. I would say central characters, but there's a huge lack of that. See, the storyline is supposed to follow a group of boys, friends, who undergo these experiences together. But in this movie, we're only following Paul. He's the main character. We're not following Paul or Albert, his friend who loves horses. No, we're following just Paul. And unfortunately, Paul is quiet. A lot. No pun intended. He's very quiet. He doesn't say much. And because he's quiet, there's no character development. There's no arcing. There's no attachment to these characters. So when Paul sees one of his classmates that, as an audience, we may or may not recognize, we don't care. If someone dies or something terrible happens to them, there's no attachment. There's no reason for us to care about these characters because the movie hasn't developed them. The only time Paul gets any time to shine, so to speak, is when he's in this crater with this French soldier. And just like the other versions of this movie, that's probably the best scene in the film because not only did it capture the emotion very similarly to the other depictions, but this is the only time where we see any emotion from Paul, any regret, any sorrow, any sadness for why he's there, what he's done. And that's the only time you really feel anything because it's like after that, does it change him? We don't know. Because after certain events in the movie, he just has this deadpan, bored, you know, numb look about him. And there's nothing there to follow. That's not that entertaining. The most entertaining part of this movie is with the character played by Daniel Bruhl. He's like this ambassador for Germany who wants to get this armistice signed because his country is tired of all these boys going off to war and dying for no reason. Those parts were tense, but it's about people meeting in a room who may or may not sign a piece of paper. And that's the most entertaining part of this movie. Now, to be fair, I will say that because we had movies like um, Hacksaw Ridge and especially 1917 come out before this movie, I feel like all the war things that stand out or interesting happen to that. I mean, this movie, All Quiet in the Western Front, should have been like War Horse, where you have an article of clothing, whether it's a jacket or a pair of boots, and you should have followed those clothes from one soldier whose life ends far too shortly to another. Make it impactful. Make it emotional. But because you follow one character who doesn't say a whole lot, who doesn't really depict any emotion, it's like the director wanted to show all these brutal parts of the war and wanted to just be flashy with it. Hey, look Look at how many exploding people I can have on screen. Look at all these people caught up in barbed wire I can depict. Look at all these 
you know, bloody things. And it's like, okay, cool, you can direct a war. That That's an accomplishment. To make a movie requires a lot, but to make a war movie, that is quite the accomplishment. But as far as the story goes, there really isn't any. It's just you following a war that, by the end, when in text, when they say how many people died, three million people died for only a hundred feet of, of land, you know, kind of like after watching the Chernobyl show, you know, you're entertained by that, but at the end you're like, man, all that could have been avoided. And unfortunately, after watching this version of All Quiet in the Western Front, that can be avoided too. So, because of that, I'm going to give the 2022 version of All Quiet in the Western Front a C. It looked really good, and it made me hate war, but as far as characters go and story, there really isn't any. So until next time, guys, see ya.